yeah, it's amazing that the currency of trust in social media is authenticity and to recognize that there are ways to um, systematize that and, and, and be genuine. I'm here with a great friend of The Remarkable Practice, Bill Esteb. Bill is here. We're going to have a conversation about websites. We're going to talk about digital footprint. We're going to talk about media in general. And we're going to have a specific conversation for those doctors who are getting ready to launch their practice. Hello and welcome to The Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franzen. What's up, Remarkables? Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Stephen Franzen, and I'm here with a great friend of the Remarkable Practice, Bill Esteb. Bill is here. We're going to have a conversation about websites. We're going to talk about digital footprint. We're going to talk about media in general, and we're going to have a specific conversation for those doctors who are getting ready to launch their practices and they want to establish that digital footprint, but it's going to be gold for everyone that's listening. Anybody in chiropractic that wants to learn more about getting their message, their brand promise, their personal brand out into the ecosystem. Bill Esteb, welcome brother. Uh, hello and greetings and uh, salutations. <laughs> it's great to have you here, my friend. Um, and I, I'll call you my friend because I'm going to go back. Geez, do I do it to us? Is it 30 years? Uh, the first time I read from a patient's point of view, uh, which was a formative book for me uh, in my career very early on. One of the first, really, I would say, chiropractic business books that I read uh, of many to follow. <laughs> and many of those were yours. Um, I want you to know that I've read that book myself and all of your books, uh, but I've also gifted that book. I can't even countless times uh, to many people who have told me they want to become a chiropractor, the young chiropractors. Uh, so just on behalf of all chiropractors, thanks so much for the awesome work that you've done and the perspective uh, that you brought to us as chiropractors, as chiropractic business owners, as leaders. Uh, well done, my friend. Well, thank you. It's it's uh, <clears throat> my attempt to try to give back. Uh, probably one of the things that I find uh, most uh, challenging is if there's anything worse than a patient who is suffering, it's a chiropractor who is suffering. And so I, I've tried to uh, share ideas and perspectives from the other side of the adjusting table, so to speak, the patient's point of view. And that's hit home for a lot of people who uh, uh, find that perspective uh, to be uh, uh, challenging sometimes, but also helpful. Man, it certainly helped this guy out. And uh, I'm sure you're familiar with strengths finders where they you know, chart out your 32 strengths and they list them in order of uh, where your highest strengths are versus your lowest. And I think Empathy is number 36 for me. <laughs> so it was just fantastic for me at a very young stage of my career to gain an appreciation of like, oh man, you always have to put yourself in that patient's place, you know, not only in communications, verbal spoken communications, but taking a tour of your practice, looking around, going through your process procedures, filling out your forms, et cetera. And now today in uh, the modern age of uh, the this internet media frenzy, um, all of your website, your social media, the continuity across those different platforms, your messaging, man, what an opportunity to communicate your message at the highest level. The world is flat, how to be able to you know, increase your reach almost effortlessly, uh, almost for free. If you do this well, uh, it's incredible, but it's also uh, there's, it's ripe with opportunity for you to screw it up and create confusion because of all of the, the above. So, uh, Bill, I'm glad we're having this conversation today. How have things changed and how much have things changed from your perspective around the chiropractors trying to communicate to their community? Sadly, uh, probably the biggest change, uh, and there's good changes, but the, the, the biggest challenge I see is that Sadly, in all too many cases, we are graduating uh, chiropractors who have uh, who don't have a clear identity. 
uh, because they, uh, the, the, the philosophical implications and the metaphysics, if you will, of the, of, of healing uh, are, are something that are just not being covered in chiropractic colleges, most of them. I mean, there's some wonderful exceptions. But uh, so what happens is that we come out or chiropractors come out sometimes uh, with a lack of confidence. They have uh, poor boundaries. They don't know exactly where their responsibility ends and the patients begins and all of those issues. Uh, are, are, are literally being bred into the profession. So that's kind of the, the downside. The upside is that uh, in the 40 some odd years that I've been involved in this profession, in a support role, I've seen a huge change in the, uh, the image of, of chiropractors. Uh, it's not so much, uh, uh, you know, uh, will you see a chiropractor? It's have you seen a chiropractor? That's, that's changed a lot uh, in, in, in these four decades. So I think there's some real positive uh, influences. And, you know, the, the other thing that this, that's happened as well on our respective watches is that uh, the, the Internet has shown up and has given each of us a printing press, if you will, an opportunity yeah. to get our particular uh, brand uh, out into the world. And so uh, th th this is an exciting opportunity, but it, but there's a responsibility that comes with that as well. Mm -hmm. With great power comes great responsibility. So I want to circle back to something you said there around the identity crisis, because it doesn't go much deeper than that, right? So, you know, yeah, man, I thought you guys were going to have a conversation about, you know, what does it take to have a uh, successful website or how to optimize a website, et cetera. We'll get there. Um, but ultimately, your website better represent you and your business and the problem that you solve for the community, right? So uh, at the end of the day, you better be clear on exactly what that is, right? So as we get down to the identity, when you're, let's say, designing your website and designing your your brand message and your narrative, even the look and feel, the website is going to say who you are as a business, right? So you're going to hopefully drive the narrative and tell the story to your community so they don't make one up on your behalf, which, of course, would be completely sideways if they tried to do that. If you leave it to them, you know, what an opportunity and or therefore a responsibility to get this right. So just I love the exercise when it comes to like vision casting your business, vision casting your practice, whether it's you're getting ready to launch your practice, brand new practice, or you've been in practice for 25 years and maybe it's time for a refresh and, a, and to audit your messaging that you're putting out to your community inside and outside of your practice, right? So the exercise itself is who are you, right? So as a business, not necessarily who you are as a person or as the owner of the business, but who are you in your community as your business? Um, branding is such an incredibly complex and important step in the process of establishing yourself, establishing yourself as a business, as part of a community. Um, the way I teach this is your brand is not what you say about your business to your community. Your brand is actually what your community says about your business, right? So if I were to walk around town and ask the town, hey, you go to SDEB Garbradic, you know, tell me about that. And it's like, Whatever story they tell, that's your brand <laughs> in your community, um, like it or not. So we want to be like super high, highly intentional about casting that story, casting that vision. And of course, that's going to come with a strong self-awareness and a self-identity of understanding who I am. Why did I become a chiropractor? Why did I open a chiropractic practice, a chiropractic business? The purpose of a business is to solve a problem for another person. What problems do we solve? Who do we love to solve those problems for? How do we solve those problems? We have to start there, Bill, to make sure that we shape a story that we can then convey very clearly using this incredibly powerful uh, media strategy. Well, yeah. And the challenge is, is that this moment of trying to hatch our particular brand comes at a time in our lives when we're still trying to figure out who we are, you know? And so uh, if, if you're in your 20s, uh, or I, I, or older, uh, you're still trying to figure out uh, how the world works. And uh, boy, issues of self-esteem, uh, self-identity, uh, all of these factors, uh, issues about affluence and uh, it, it, it's it's a very combustible time in one's life is to figure out what what you're going to take a stand for. And the challenge that all too often happens is that many 
chiropractors think that the best strategy is to go beige. That's that's at least that's what I call it. Beige is where you round off all the sharp corners and you try to show up as bland and as unoffensive as possible. And I think a lot of people forget that the the rule of attraction has a corollary rule, and that is the the, the law of repulsion that you cannot attract if you're not willing to repel. And so this is part of that formative aspect of, of not just determining who you want to serve, but who don't you want to serve. I'm so glad you went there. <laughs> so uh, part of the culture of the remarkable practice is we're unapologetic. We're loving, right? We're inclusive, right? We're supportive. We're, we, we recognize that there's a there's a great deal of variety and maybe even disparity among chiropractors. We get all that, but we're very clear as to who we are and who we serve and what problems we solve for them. You know, our tagline is our brand promise. You know, it's about creating a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. I mean, if you and I have been around long enough, we know that there's just there's too much brokenness that comes with quote unquote success in chiropractic, but they were mistaking busyness for success. And we're teaching doctors that you can have your cake and eat it too, but you can, if you're not intentional about that. Right. So this is a big, this, there, we're not afraid to be polarizing and we encourage our clients to do the same. Right. So that creates conflict, conflict clarifies. Right. So to use your words, your brand promise needs to be equal parts repelling and compelling. Right. So we should be, repelling the wrong people out of the practice and compelling the right people to click the link, call the office, walk across that threshold and come in. So let's talk about that. Like you can convey that, you can communicate that with your website. I say, absolutely. Yeah, because what many chiropractors forget is that they are the product. Uh, the, the patient or prospective patient is buying them. And so uh, and yet, simultaneously with that, many, many chiropractors, when left to their own devices, uh, will design a website and include content that is, uh, again, beige. It has the emotional resonance of a, a CV. It does not attract. It does not scratch the itch that a prospective new patient is wanting scratched. And so everything turns out to be very uh, general. Uh, all the sharp edges have been rounded off. No flaws, no problems at our house, never had any challenges with chocolate or alcohol or you know whatever your little uh, uh, precious thing is. And so we show up as superhuman people. And the problem is, is that when you lower your guard and show up authentically you, it's the only way someone else can say, yeah, that's 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 the person I want to meet. That's the person I want to let touch me is because they show up authentic and real. And that is so uh, counterintuitive to right. the image that so many new practitioners want to project. Yeah, I mean, we all walk with a limp um, and that makes you so much more approachable to a community that's barely making it, <laughs> you know? So, you know, one thing we know to be true is um, you're surrounded by sick, suffering, toxic, deficient, vaccinated and subluxated human beings that are just desperately seeking a better way to better health. And these people are hoping that there's going to be a human on the other side of that URL or that phone number or when they come into the office. They're going to walk into a strange place full of strange people doing strange things. That's really scary raising their hands for the first time. And for so many people, your website is going to be the first interaction. That's going to be the first time they're going to, they're going to make any association to who you are and to be sensitive, to show up as humans, right? To make sure that there's a humanity and as a realism. So you can be empathetic and people can look and be like, oh man, that's me. And that's the thing. And the time is now, right? So as they land on your site, because going to be, you know, when, when, in my experience, at least the mistakes, I screwed this up 10 times to Sunday, right? So building countless websites, you know, I was building a website for myself. I was building a website for my raving fans who were already inside my practice. Like I was building this resource for my people. And what I recognized was, well, wait a minute, that's not really what this thing is. You know, especially now with the sophistication of like, we know this, this meta and this Google, right? So there's people coming from Google, these on the Google side of things, these, these are people that are searching, they're seeking. They're looking for solutions to problems. They're looking to see, is this the method? Is this the expert? Is this the place? And you need to be thinking like that. These seekers are showing up and they're, they're Googling and they're looking for help. That 
unfortunately at this point, after even 40 years with your great work and mine, um, people are not Googling um, subluxation correction. They're not Googling uh, optimal expression of my innate potential yet, Bill, right? Yet, they're just not there yet. So we've got to make sure that the people that are landing on that website, you're speaking into their listening, right? So that they, you have relevance and and specificity without feeling like, oh man, I don't want to do a bait and switch. Man, that's wicked hard to do in that marketing narrative. Well, here's the good news is by, sadly, by the time most people are contemplating chiropractic care, They've exhausted the medical solution. They've been told to learn to live with it, or it's all in your head, or we got nothing else for you, or we need to do this irreversible surgery or something. So what a, what a prospective new patient is looking for is something different. And yet so many chiropractors want to show up same. They, 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 they take on a, a medical odor. They, they take on um, a, a perspective that is very anti-chiropractic in some ways. Uh, so the good news is, is that the way you can be totally, completely different is to be you, authentically you, no acting required. Yeah, it's amazing that the currency of trust in social media is authenticity and to recognize that there are ways to um, systematize that and, and, and be genuine. Don't be disingenuous. Don't be forced. Don't be contrived, right? So telling your story, having a video that tells your story, but more importantly, tell the story from the perspective of who you love to help, the work mm. you love to do, the problems you love to solve, right? That's how you tell your story. Nobody wants to know, oh yeah, I went to, you know, Austin Prep High School and I and went to UVM. Who cares, right? So who cares? You know, you can put that on your CV on the About Us, have a link somewhere. If somebody really cares, they can find it. What they want to hear is, who do you love to help? What problems do you love to solve? What outcomes do you like to get for people? What results do you love to get for people? What, what energizes you? Why do you get up in the morning, right? And then substantiate those claims with social proof, with testimonials and stories and let your patients tell the story for you. So Bill, I know I only have you for a few more minutes, so I'm just going to make this practical and tactical if we can. Now that we've just solved all the world's problems from a high level, uh, <laughs> let's talk. let's talk about like, I hate to do this to you, bro, but is, is it like the top five things that must be in a website to make sure I always say it's got to, it, does it work and does it work, right? Does, uh, are all the links working? Are we following SEO best practices, et cetera? And does it convert, right? So does it, does it work and does it work? So, you know, talk to me about like, if you were to say auditing a website, you land on somebody's homepage or they're building their website, what do you look at for like, is there five things? Is there always a call to action? Is there always a phone number? Is there always a testimonial? Is there, what, tell me, tell me, what do we want to see when we land on somebody's website? Well, <clears throat> um, the, the thing that is the number one uh, issue has to do with photography. Uh, it's, it's usually the, 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 the corner that is cut because there's often an expense attached to it. Um, but what you really, really, really want to do is to create an emotional connection with a prospective new patient. And photography does that better than a thousand words. <clears throat> yes. But so you start with, I mean, I, I go to chiropractic uh, websites and there's no photograph of the doctor at all. It's all stock pictures of athletic people, fit this, exercising that. I mean, this is, these are not real people. These are clearly models at stock photography. So if you won't if you won't reveal who you are and what it looks like inside the four walls of your office and the smiling happy staff and the patients who are beaming and all the rest of it it makes it really hard to make a buying decision on behalf of that practitioner so yeah seo stuff that's all I mean, everyone knows what that stuff is just go do it okay there's no secrets anymore about how you uh, do that properly and 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 do it without causing problems but it's the photography it's the it's the page, it's the doctor bio that um is is distant it's 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 in third person it's about some a museum object that we're describing rather than someone who's living, breathing, has a family, they're having challenges just like you are and that are, are showing up. And the thing that is bizarre to me 
is that the one thing that patients really, 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 really want to know is why in the heck did you choose the wacky career of chiropractic? Right. What's your story? What what caused you to take the hard, narrow, difficult path called chiropractic that everyone knows doesn't work? It's a, it, People are prejudiced about it, blah, 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 blah. Why did you do this? And very few uh, websites, particularly in the in the doctor bio section, uh, really address that. But l l let's call it what it is: the most popular page, homepage. Obviously, that's where we usually end. We begin the the journey. Second most popular page, doctor bio. That's got to be top notch. It's got to be uh, delightful. It's got to be fascinating. It's got to be authentic, transparent, real. That the, you get those two things right. A lot of it takes care of itself. Yeah, have the call to actions on every page, uh, offer a newsletter, whatever, and, in, and and attempt to engage. But if you won't, if you won't even divulge who you are, why would I want to show up in your practice? Because here's an amazing thing about healing: you lower their, you lower your guard, and it encourages patients to lower their guard. And the whole thing starts to take on an entirely different energy when we can be honest and authentic with each other. Oh man, I love that. Um, I love that. The the big idea of making a person feel like they know you so that they can like you and they can trust you even before they come into your practice. Um, that, that's I think that that's a great litmus test to somebody who's looking to build a website or interviewing the experts to help them build their website. Because by the way, I've I'm telling people directly here, make sure I, I don't create any confusion around this. Do not try to build your own web. This is not a DIY project. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this right now, this is a remarkable CEO podcast. So, you know, what we're always looking for leverage, right? So the do not try to be a website expert. Do not try to be an SEO expert. Do not try to be a social media expert. This is where you leverage experts, right? So use your money to buy their time, energy, focus, and talent to free up your time, energy, focus, and talent to do what you're uniquely gifted at doing. Super clear here, right? So when you are auditing a website or considering building a website, working with an expert team, even look at the website and ask, does this tell my story? Does this make me feel approachable? Do I feel approachable when I look at this? Do, do, does, can people feel like they know me so that they can like me and they can trust me? And then they'll listen to my story. Last thing I'm going to say on this bill is telling the story, tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? So I think that in chiropractic, where you started this conversation, you know, we've lost the cornerstone, right? So it's our unique success proposition in this blood red ocean and this very crowded and confused healthcare marketplace. There's a lot of noise out there and nothing cuts through the noise like the simple and elegant solution of chiropractic. You got it. All right, my friend. So um, talk to me a bit about your 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 company, the business, the services. Um, remember, a lot of the docs listening to this are, they're brand new. They're, they're like, what's the timeline? When do I start building? Do I, like, do I reach out to you guys? And, you know, is it six months before I want to open my practice? Or give us a sense of that for those who don't know. Well, the first thing I would do if I was still uh, at, at school is at least go get your domain name. I mean, those names are going, it's harder and harder to get a, a great domain. I mean, familychiropractic.com, yeah, that was chosen in 1995. You know, you, you didn't get that one. But so it, at least, you know, get your domain name if you can. Now, certainly, although we at Perfect Patients can help do that as well, if, you, if, if that seems pretty scary. But it, it's really about uh, enlisting help. It takes anywhere from... 60 to 90 days uh, to actually put together a quality website that's going to stand the test of time. Frankly, a lot of that time is not us. It's waiting for the doctor to respond to our questions. And, you know, when can we schedule an interview so we can spend some time understanding you and your practice and your hopes and dreams and all the rest. So uh, it takes it takes that that amount of time just to do it properly. And then you you launch with all the SEO in place, all of these strategies in place, uh, the call to actions on every page and all the rest. It, it, the beauty is, I think, and, and one thing that separates what we're doing is that we've got a team of about 80 or so folks around the world who do this. And these are people who think the world would be a better place if everyone got adjusted. 
So that's the that's the subtext of what we're doing. And we're just I, I think so many times website people see themselves as technologists who do marketing. And for us, we're marketeers who use technology to drive the message. And I think that's probably the biggest distinction. Beautiful, beautiful. And I think of your website as your home base when it comes to your marketing. All roads lead to Rome, right? So point everybody to your website uh, where they can get the information that they need, where they're compelled to click the link, call the office, and come on in and start a better way to better health. Bill Estab, you know, from a coach's point of view, I appreciate you and helping us help more people, help more people. Uh, perfect patience, man. You guys run a great company and you build great sites. And we appreciate you for all you've done for chiropractic and for chiropractors around the world. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable. Thank you.